My name is Kyle Willis, and this is Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. Welcome back to Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. We are carrying on our cigar marketing series, and I am stoked today to have our guest, my friend, Vince Hill from b b Cigars. Vince, thank you for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Kyle. I appreciate it. Hey, I, I'm, I'm really excited to jump in our conversation. As for those who don't know, Vince is the, the man behind b and uh, They're in Philadelphia. I've been a customer. Vince, it's been probably, what, two, three years now that I think I've been buying from you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one of the things I love most about shopping from b and is that they've created this beautiful hybrid between online and offline. They got uh, a great quaint shop in, in Philly, and Vince has built a incredible presence for himself and for b and predominantly through social media that I love it where I can hit up Vince anytime and say, hey, are you carrying this? Do you have this? Or better yet, sometimes you message me and you say, hey, I just got this in. Are you interested? You've done a marvelous job building that rapport and relationship with customers, both local and online that I think very few retailers have understood how to do well today. So Vince, what I love to start off with is just kind of get a little bit of your origin. Hear hear from you, kind of where did this interest and passion for cigars begin? Well, the funny thing is, you know, I never actually smoked cigarettes. I know a lot of guys went from, you know, they started smoking cigarettes and went to cigars or they smoked both, you know, still. Yeah. Uh, both of my parents were cigarette smokers and it always just dis- sort of disgusted me. <laughs> sure. And, uh, you know, both of my parents actually, both my mom in 2004 and my dad in 2011 passed away from COPD. I'm sorry. And, uh, from cigarette smoking. Well, so it happens when you start smoking in your mid teen, you know, mid smoking cigarettes back in the fifties and your mid teens and you, uh, you know, smoke nonstop. Yeah, you know, my yeah. mom stopped as soon as she found out she had it. You know, she lived 13 more years, but uh, my father, Frank's just about smoked till the end. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I never really, never smoked anything. Right before my wedding, back in 1989, my brother-in-law gave me a cigar and said, you know, here, try this, smoke it before your wedding. So it was, turned out it was a backwoods. <laughs> and, uh, it was, yeah. Uh, the backwoods or something along that line. Yeah, sure. And I was afraid to smoke it, so I stuck it just in a drawer for three weeks. <laughs> and so one night, <laughs> just like getting real close to the wedding, I just say, hey, let me give this a try. So I pulled it out, dry, brittle as can be. Sure. Lit the thing, you know, took a puff. You know, he had said, hey, you don't inhale it. But the first time was not successful. I inhaled some of it. Not good. But... You know, for some reason, there was just something about that contemplative sitting. I mean, even this trashy thing that I was smoking. <laughs> just, <laughs> something just hit with me. Something hmm. just, it was almost like a revelation. Wow. And, uh, you know, back then, obviously, there wasn't near as many things available. Uh, sure, sure. So, you know, that was, you know, couple months later decided to go out look forget exactly what drugstore when the drugstores used to sell bundled cigars and five packs of crappy cigars i don't know if it was rite aid or whatever it was at the time <laughs> so picked up something you know dominican something or other with no bands and tried it liked it of course at that time i didn't know any brother but i liked it just like the experience sure then i started smoking with my brother-in-law and then Bam, you know, a couple of years after that, the cigar boom hits, all these brands on the market, you know. So, but the first real premium cigar I bought, forget exactly what year it was, but it was during the boom time, was sure. at Holt down okay. in Philly. And uh, just got hooked and haven't stopped. Yeah. And when was it that you joined B&B? 
I started in B&B in October, end of September 2014, uh, part-time. Just to, I was a customer. Okay. Come in, you know, didn't live all that far. Uh, was a part-time customer. I wasn't a full, you know, just B&B customer. Shopped, you know, all over the place. You know, would stop in and, you know, one day I was in and one of the guy, you know, guy that was working here said, hey, we're looking for somebody part-time. Are you interested? And I said, well, oh, that's weird. I just talked to my wife about <laughs> possibly finding a part-time job for that. Nice. Credit. Yeah. And uh, talked to the owner and, you know, ended up uh, getting hired. But the funny thing was I had seen, you know, because of loving cigars so much, I had looked about six or seven months previous to that and was, I figured, hey, I'll just check on Craigslist and see, you know, if there's any openings or stuff, you know, in the area. So I look, there's a cigar store, B&B. So I send a, an email through it and I get a response. Oh, sorry, we hired somebody. This ah. is it, thanks for your interest. <laughs> So I always make sure I bring that up to Brian once every couple of years <laughs> to remind him that uh, he initially rejected me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so I started part-time, and uh, within, you know, three or four months, uh, I went to full-time, you know, just help, you know, just working in the store, but I was working another full-time job. Yeah. So for another six or seven months, I worked two full-time jobs. Wow. I ran security at a pharmaceutical company and worked here. Okay. And then it okay. just got to the point where, you know, Brian had asked me if I'd be interested in running the store because the other person was leaving, he was moving. And I said, sure, why not? It's funny to hear that because before I started my digital marketing agency, I, uh, I similarly applied for a, a job at an agency here in Seattle got a similar response from them this was back in what to say 2013 uh, saying yes I'm sorry that position has been filled and about I want to say six months later I had my my recruiter call me up saying hey I got an opening at this great agency in Seattle would you be interested in joining them lo and behold it was that one I had applied for in a similar deal I ended up going to work for them for a little over a year built out their paid advertising department uh, and it was that it, similar to to your story what what uh, my boss being like yeah I remember that time you rejected me yeah now I made you a million dollars in your first year uh, running your ads department aren't you glad you rejected me and I came back and get <laughs> so some of those times yeah when, when you know you, you look at someone you're like yeah it's not gonna work or you don't even realize who you're rejecting turns into being the opportunity you really need <laughs> but look I don't, I don't blame Brian I mean I had never actually met him before sure he, he wasn't here any of the times I had shot. I mean, I may have run into him over the years, but didn't remember. And, uh, you know, he had hired somebody that he knew. So, hey, I don't blame him. Yeah. No? Well, uh, tell me that. So when you began with b and and, you know, to kind of to kind of steal some thunder for a moment uh, to kind of say where we're going, is, you know, as we've talked a little bit of some of the changes that have come through b and you've been able to see some significant growth where basically it's been about a 3x in, increase in annual revenues and some of the changes that have been done. And just you being able to lead uh, the, the growth of b and What were some of those initial changes you saw with the shop that it better serve customers and those that were coming in uh, through the doors and then eventually uh, the addition of online as well? Right. Well, being part, you know, have, being a cigar smoker and hanging around cigar smokers and having friends and you know, that smoke cigars and then being part of online, you know, Facebook communities and stuff and groups, you know, I, you know, you could see that and the tide changing in the, in the industry towards the boutiques, more towards Nicaraguan cigars. And, you know, they, I mean, for a shop that had been here for, I guess about 10 years or so at the time, mm. they, they had a pretty good for the time frame you know, a decent selection of boutiques, what were considered boutiques at the time. Some of them may not be now because of the size, but, you know, they had Tatuaje, Illusion, uh, and some of the brands that are, you know, gro growing now that they're way out of boutique, you know, size, but 
you know, Brian's carried Tatuaje here since 2004, right around not long after Pete started the company, 2004, wow. 2005. Oh, that's awesome. So we, yeah. So I think he still has one box that uh, still has some cigars in at home that have uh, some of the from like 2005, I think they're Red Dios <laughs> or something along that line, the Love brown it. label. But, you know, I mean, it was mostly, you know, General, Alphadis, Rocky Patel, Alec Bradley, you know, things like that with some boutiques, you know, smaller companies. And, you know, my father was you know, a little bit of my father's cigars and, you know, a bunch of LFD. And uh, I'm trying to think back. It's been so long now. Too. Sure, sure. <laughs> I remember all the stuff that we had that we carried. But, you know, uh, some CLE, Asylum, things like that. You know, it's and as but I could see through interactions on social media with my friends that were cigar geeks that things were changing. Yeah. You know, there were these brands coming up that I felt that if we we're going to stay viable and grow, that we needed to tap into that market. And you know, Brian's always been one that's loved, you know, while he he liked traveling these couple times. He's been to Honduras with the Rocky tours and things. He loved that, you know, got along real well with them guys. And, uh, but he had always liked one of his favorite cigars when I started here that he still smokes today is the Illusion Epernay. I mean, he yeah. loves that cigar. And uh, Tatawahe loves the J22, you know, things like that. So he, you know, he always had that in him that he loved, you know, he really liked boutiques, but I, so what then what I did was try to, you know, show, Hey, well, here, try this cigar from this company, try this cigar from this company. And, uh, you know, there really hasn't been anything that I've brought to him and said, Hey, you know, at first and said, Hey, try these that he didn't love. Sure. You know, that he didn't like, sure. and, uh, so then it was, you know, I'm looking saying, Hey, well, you know, we've, in fact, one thing that they did do was right before I started, they had uh, they were out at the trade show. He was out there with the guy who managed the shop at the time, and they had run across Roma Craft, and they hadn't carried Roma. And I, they, I think they had gotten some samples and stuff and liked them. And I think they maybe even had placed an order. I'm not sure because we didn't actually start carrying Roma. We didn't have anything in the store until I started. So, okay. I mean – but once, you know, once we got the cigars in the store and he was smoking them, he absolutely fell in love with them. And yeah. it was, all right, so this strategy is working. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we start bringing in more and more boutiques and uh, downsizing some of the bigger brands. And yes, did I feel bad? Yeah, because, you, you know, whether a, a sales rep works for a small brand or a big brand, they're working their tails off. They're supporting their family. And when you're telling that, you know, then when you make a decision to stop carrying some of their lines or completely eliminate the line, you're directly affecting that person's ability to make money. Sure. You know, the money they're making. So that, that part's the hard part of it. Of course. But, you know, with my job being to make Brian money for the store, I've got to do what is best for oh, yeah. him and the shop first and foremost. So we, you know, bought in more and more and more Roma so we carried everything they had. Uh, I think that was only like a three month period before the initial order and then, you know, getting everything in. Hmm. Uh, but you know, it's been successful to now we, geez, I would literally say 60 or more percent of maybe seven, probably 60 or so percent of stuff we carry in the store is boutique cigars. I love it. Okay. And I think in that similar vein with the, the boutique cigars, you've created that incredible experience for your customers who are coming in the shop through some some of the best events I see put on. And I think you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've seen, you've been able to master how to work with a smaller space, but allow the allow allow the customer as well as the manufacturer or the rep to feel like you got a huge venue and, and a place to really care for your, your customers. What have you been able to do, you know, for the sake of our listeners, for those retailers who are saying, hey, I want to maximize the space I have. I want to create a great experience for my customers both with events as well as just on an everyday basis what are some of the things that you've been able to 
do or change uh, with the shop to create that in-store experience that's better than just smoking at home or going to someone else's lounge? Well, it's we've we've got a good group of guys that hang here, you know, that are in the lounge all the time. We do have a small lounge. I mean, admit we've got 10, 10 seats in the lounge. The you know, big screen TV, ten seats, lockers. Yeah. Uh, what we out front, you know, with with the inventory, we added three more humidors. Wow. But you know, luckily we have some outside space on the side of the store and out front where people can sit during events and congregate and things. And you know, that that is probably the one of the biggest challenges we face is when we have you know, very large Roma Crest events, black label trading company events, that it is fitting everybody into the store, making sure people are comfortable and having a good time. Yeah. But I mean, so far so good. I mean, the only issue we've had is when you're, when you're cramming 70 people or more into a shop, not let alone the people outside is the, uh, the smoke issue. Sure. So that's one of the things we were working on now. We had people in the other day that were measuring and everything to put the new ventilation system in. And uh, so hopefully that'll make things a lot better awesome. when we have the big events. But it's more just getting – most people feel the same way I do. It's just you, I hope I think from talking to people is, you, you know, you just when you're – a guy that loves cigars and you just love the industry and you love cigars. You just love hanging around people that feel the same way and love the same things you do, you know, or love the brand that you're, you know, you're representing at that, you know, at that event. So, you know, we basically just try to let everybody have a good time and, you know, spend some time talking to the manufacturer or the owner, or the, you know, or whether it's a sales rep or something, or just, have them come in, enjoy themselves when they're here, make them feel like they left. They got a good deal on the cigars. They got the cigars they wanted. They yeah. had a good time. They got some FaceTime with the brand owner that, uh, you know, got their pictures that they can post to the social media accounts with the brand owners, got their box to sign or whatever, you know, sure, sure. it's basically, just, it's really the people that make the events, not the shops. I like that. I mean, That's you good. can market something and put something out there as much as possible, but, it, it's really the customers that make the event. I mean, yes, it's great when you have, you know, James Brown or Mike Rosales or Skip Martin or somebody here or uh, Robert Caldwell or somebody, but it, it's really the guys that come, the customers that really make the event. And I think in that you where you're talking about is kind of how we first connected, and you know you've been able to build that bridge of the on on premise relationship with customers that people love and adore and follow you uh you know i come into the shop to see vince hang out with vince i know when vince makes a recommendation of a cigar i can trust it because he knows my flavor profile and you've been able to create that same bridge online as well where i personally live here in seattle i've not been to bnb in philadelphia but vince is like my uh, like my uh, local bnm and that if i'm looking something i know i can hit up hit you up and say hey when's that new robert peel coming in i want to get a box order in uh, and so i'm smoking now uh, one of the cigars i just got from one of your last events yeah we couldn't attend the event yeah, but we, you, yeah you, we did one of the dual national launch events for that yeah last friday and it, it, you made it feel like I could be there because of that that presence you've created online. I love to kind of just if there's some insight secrets that you could share of what you've been able to personally do uh, to just build that presence for yourself. Speaking you as Vince Hill to to build that presence online. Because one of the, the unique things about you is that you don't own BNB, but everyone knows Vince as BNB. And you've done a marvelous job being the face of a brick and mortar online at the same time. What was what was that? You know, was there was there a process to that? Did it just happen organically? Uh, where did that begin for you? Well, actually, I, I appreciate that the comments. Do the best I can. I probably fail more than I'm successful, <laughs> but uh, honestly, it happened organically. I mean, you've got you know the the bigger groups on Facebook like Cigar Cartel and things like that where you can interact with people. And when I joined Cigar Cartel, gosh, four and a half. Close to almost, I guess, almost five years ago now. Oh. Like I think it was October or something, of, you know, 2014 or somewhere around there. Right after that, 
Uh, I was a member of that group for years without even telling anybody that I worked at a shop or ran a shop. Huh. Because I joined the group as a consumer, as somebody who wanted to interact with fellow cigar lovers, fellow cigar smokers. I, I didn't it. join it to sell cigars. So I That's spent, good. you know, a few years, you know, a year or so, year and a half, whatever it was, involved in the group, which actually I probably was way more involved then than I am now because I <laughs> hate that, don't want to be the one who just interacts because people think they, he wants to sell stuff. But I was a member of the group, a very active member of the group, made a lot of friends before I even let anybody know that I ran a shop. And I got outed by a customer who came in <laughs> and I recognized the name when I ran the credit card. I got it. I'm like, hey, you remember Star Cartel? And he goes, yeah. I said, hey, so am I. But I got out it that way. So once you're out it, you're out it. And everybody starts asking questions. And so I figured, what the heck? Uh, you know, we'll go with it. But I've made some fantastic friends through social media and, uh, you know, during the time. And whether I, you know, I'd be friends with these guys, whether I sold cigars or not. That part is just part of the relationship. Yeah. And it's yeah. actually the least important part to me. You know, the fact that these guys will travel from New Hampshire, Virginia, all over the place to come to our events or come here. We had a good, a guy I've become very good friends with who's actually helped us out with some things, internet related things and problems. You know, I'm sure you've seen him online a lot, David Novin. Oh, yeah. From San Diego. Great guy, yeah. I spent some time uh, with him last summer. Dave. So we had the uh, our 15th anniversary weekend here, the June 21st to the 23rd. And I've become very good friends with Christopher Brown, too, from Pittsburgh, who, you know, when he's in the area, he, you know, coming to my house or hanging out at the shop. And when I'm out there visiting my son, he's either at my son's house or I'm at his house or we're awesome. out with uh, Coleman from Sinistro, the Rocky Patel Lounge, with the Bone Lounge in Pittsburgh, hanging out. But uh, so... You know, just to show you what friends you can make and what impact you can make and what relationships you can build is that, you know, we're outside during the, the first night was Espinosa and Protocol of the anniversary weekend. I'm outside and I see you know, Chris has this very distinctive yellow SUV. <laughs> so yeah. I see it drive by and I'm like, oh, Chris is here. So I'm talking to Eric Espinosa outside and uh, I hear, Vince, you punk, turn around. <laughs> and I look, and here's Dave Novin walking across the street. Oh, wow. He specifically flew in from San Diego to stay the weekend, to spend the weekend with me, with us here. I love it. I love that it. That is the important part to me. Yeah. Is the friendship. And uh, the fact that these guys will travel hundreds of miles, in David's case, thousands of miles to come hang out at the shop and hang out with me. That's, that's the part that I love, you know, yeah. and I've got to be through social media friends with a bunch of other shop owners, shop managers, people that work for, you know, cigar companies, you know, cigar shop, you know, cigar company owners, people that do social media and things for different cigar companies or cigar shops. That's the part that I really like. Absolutely. That's what means the most to me. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that I've loved most about the cigar industry as I've come into it. And I told the story you know, in our, our first episode of how I got into Cigar Cartel, I think it was about four years ago. Uh, and I won't repeat the story, but for, for your benefit, was basically running a contest for the marketing agency, uh, trying to get more exposure for it, offering a, a humidor, some cigars. But like you're saying, it was that camaraderie and the relationships that brought me in as, I mean... Uh, back in the day, I, I had no clue what I was smoking. It was all of the Cigar International samplers, and they're great. There's nothing nothing wrong with them. Ev but... Everybody goes through that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I mean, we, we've got us now that we're cigar snobs and things like that. I'll only smoke this, or I'll only smoke Cubans, or I'll only smoke this brand or that brand. But everybody started somewhere. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, well, my wife, I used to get in so much trouble with all the packages that they would deliver from you know, I was buying from JR Cigar when Lou Rothman was still running it, and he was sending these little newsletters out every month or two that were hilarious, his little marketing sales newsletters, you know. 
uh, before the internet days, you know, when you're doing yeah. mail order. Yeah, yeah. And um, I used to get in so much trouble with all the packages that would show up from GI <laughs> and JR from, you know, yeah. So, you know, I, everybody started somewhere and sometimes we, us boutique cigar geeks or cigar geeks, uh, forget sometimes where we started and what we used to smoke when we started. Uh, absolutely. I can tell you now, I still remember my first cigar being in Macanudo Hyde Park that I think we either got from one of those convenience stores or, uh-huh. it, you know, national cigar land chains where I'm like, yeah, what's the cheapest box you have? Great. We'll take that, please. So, right. uh, but I think, you know, like you're saying about the importance of relationship, I love, I love that aspect of it building that rapport so that way not only are people flying across the country to spend time with you but that didn't happen in a vacuum that didn't happen overnight you you put in some work through facebook through other social media channels to build that relationship where they could trust you and your recommendations you know make some good deals for them but most importantly build that rapport so that they would say if I'm going to spend the money and time to leave my home, leave my local brick and mortars to go spend time at someone else's, Vince is the place I want to be. Yeah, I mean, that, to me, that's so cool and personally wow. fulfilling. I, that really just, uh, but, you know, every time that you get a notification that when somebody mentions you or something like that in, the, in a group, and when somebody recommends that they contact you to buy or they recommend the shop or the website, that to me, that is validation of everything. Absolutely. I mean, because there's there's a ton of cigar shops out there. There's some great retailers out there. There are some guys that are just fantastic people that run fantastic shops. And when I'm mentioned in that group, when we, when B and B is mentioned in that group, I feel honored. Honestly, I'm not yeah. BSing you. I, I do. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is from not getting into it just to sell cigars. I love that. It's getting into it for the, you know, the friendships, the relationships. I mean, you know, when, when things happen, when somebody has a bad time or they have a good, you know, they have, we just have a guy I've become friends with local here who just had a child yesterday. Great guy. And yeah. uh, you can be part of that. You may not be with them physically because you're working or they're, but you can, you know, you can share in the experiences, the good times and the bad times. I mean, like the, you know, don't want to bring up a bad thing, but when your parents had the fire. At I was, was going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know? I mean, to speak for you it's, it, on that story, it's, you know, for those listening who don't know, my parents ha- have this beautiful property uh, in, in Seattle, Washington, in a town called Kirkland. And it's the house I grew up in, a full acre. It's the last residential acre in Kirkland. They had a really bad house fire uh, about t- two summers ago now, and the entire insides uh, of the house was lost. Everything was burnt to a crisp uh, or uh, damaged by the, the smoke and soot. And they were on vacation at the time when it happened uh, with, uh, you know, coming home to being told ev- all of your possessions are gone. Uh, you, only, you literally don't have the clothes on your back and thankfully a suitcase because you're coming back from vacation. I, for those who don't know, I, I, I do a lot of cigar uh, sales and lottos and, and stuff in these Facebook groups. Vince, knowing that, reached out. To, I was doing a, a, some sales because I wanted to give my parents some spending money when they came home to say, hey, go buy some of your, your essentials. Make sure you got uh, some clean underwear and clothes to put on because you don't have a place to do laundry right now. And so I did a few sales and Vince reached out to me and said, hey man, I'm sending you some stuff for your parents. Go sell it and give that money to your parents. And then, I mean, when I gave that money to my parents and told them, this is from my cigar community. This is from the people who have loved me uh, online and they want to love, uh, love you guys through me. You were monumental in that time and uh, I'm still indebted to you for that gratitude, for that generosity. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just what we do, you know. That's just what friends do, what, commu- what a community does. You know, we band together to try to help out when somebody has a bad time. I mean, yeah. you, you and I, I know you've seen, too, multiple things where, you know, the, the groups have banded together to help people out. Yeah. You know, and I think that's fantastic, man. I, I just think that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I you love know, that. It just shows what, you know, matter, you know, that's the one thing I love about cigars. And the thing that I probably, other than the cigars themselves, 
sure. with the cigar community. It doesn't matter your background, your race, your ethnicity, where you were born, you know, what your social status is, how much money you make, yeah. what kind of car you drive. When we sit together and have a cigar, none of that stuff matters. True, true. All that matters is the stuff we have, what we have in common, the cigars, and we sit eye to eye, level to level, face to face, and have conversations. That's what I love about this business. Uh, uh, amen to that, man. Let me kind of break it down practically for, for those listening uh, who haven't been able to create that online presence yet and, and saying, hey, you know, I want to build that type of rapport. Does that just mean I give out a bunch of stuff? If you were to, you know, to make it very practical, if you were to start at a new shop tomorrow and you ha- you know, you didn't have the presence, the name that Vince carries, that B&B carries, and you were just beginning, Jack or Jill, and, and no one knows who Jack or Jill is yet, what would be some of the first things that you would start off with? And it may be a re- reiteration of some of the things we already talked about, but just to make it super practical, what would kind of be your, your first steps to create that presence, build that online community uh, to try to build some of that rapport so people do eventually want to travel and see you, call you out when they talk about what shops you should buy from. Where would you begin? Oh, God, there's a lot better people that do it better than me to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, I mean, first thing it would be, you know, you have to start and while we do a decent amount of, you know, we do a pretty good amount of business online. Yeah. The overwhelming majority of our business is in shop. And when people hear that, they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, we have great foot traffic. I mean, it's gotten more and more, but it really, if you're getting down to practicality, it's carrying what today's cigar smokers want. People that enjoy cigars, what they're enjoying. Yeah. Not just stocking the store with the same old and not that there's anything wrong with it. If you enjoy the Mac, you know, we talk Mac and and I would say 70% of the people that smoke, you know, they're in the cigars today, cigar geeks at one time or another smoke the Mac and if they've been smoking long enough. Sure. <laughs> but just give, keeping an ear to the ground, keeping, you know, what's good out there, what's, what's popular, not just what's popular, but being able to, to see what is coming and what startups have a chance, like you know, that. which owners and what brands you feel that you can get behind. And of course, ones that will give you support too. Yeah. yeah. But it's it, the main, the main thing is just providing a, providing the, the, the inventory that is current, what today's cigar lovers, the new generation, you know, I'd say the last, I'd say probably most people, you know, 45 and under or so 50 and under what they're smoking and uh and then come into the store can them making them feel well can them you know talking not you know not ignoring them when they walk in saying hi and not jumping all over them and following them around <laughs> you know yeah give them a yeah. chance to especially somebody for the first time give them a chance you know say hi when they come in give them a chance to look around and if they look like they're looking for something and they look like they can't find it, well, that's usually pretty easy to see. Sure. Pretty easy to tell. But the, you know, with the online stuff, it's, that was what I wanted to do it for originally. And it took a while, a decent amount of time for us to get that up and running. And then we did a six month sort of, Hey, I let, you know, what was it four or six months where we let some people know, Hey, we've got this up, take a look at it, see what you think. You know, you can order stuff, but we're not putting it out there that it's up because we want to make a couple people to try it and try some things and see how it works Yeah, to make the platforms right, to make sure everything's right, make sure it, and, 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 because we use Shopify and we've, we've had some issues with things with Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> the 18, uh, we, we, we've only been doing this. We've only been really been doing this for 18 months. Don't get me started and, uh, on Shopify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been doing it for 18 months and we've had some issues with the, you know, with the platform. Sure. But you know, that happened. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to get into it originally to, you know, because we're in the, like you, we're in the part of a part of a country where, you know, during the winter, you know, guys aren't, are smoking a lot less cigars. Yep. You know, yep. because they're not out, they're not able to smoke outside. They, you know, they don't smoke in their house. Their spouse won't let them or whatever. There's a good other. Or they, you know, it just, you know, it gets dark earlier. It's light.
light later, it gets dark earlier. So cold to smoke outside for months at a time. And I was looking for something that we could do to, you know, even out that, you know, the sales throughout the year. So that the, you know, the months of January, February, and March weren't the down times. Yeah, sure. And to me, you know, what made the most sense was reaching out and being able to establish something where you could reach customers across the country. You know, the guy in Louisiana or Alabama or San Diego in Dave's case, where, you know, they're smoking outside all year round for the most part. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so they're consuming a lot more cigars. So, and that, the first year we had just started, it was pretty successful during that time. You know, it helped out a lot. But, you know, this year it really made a big difference. And, uh, you know, I mean, the name of the game is to stay in business and be successful, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let me kind of just wrap up with a few uh, a few kind of wildfire questions to just kind of learn, learn a little bit more about you personally, what, what's coming down the road for B&B, and kind of just end kind of in a fun way. So you told us a little bit already about your first cigar, starting off with the backwoods. Uh, my apologies. I'm glad that stayed with you. What is your all-time favorite cigar? If you were stuck on a desert island, you could only bring one box, uh, what would you bring? It's kind of like asking that is a child. tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, of course, I, Brian would love me to say the floor to Caesar. Hey. Made it a van neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a solid cigar. The, the original <laughs> or the red? <laughs> I don't know, man. And that, that's a tough one, but sheesh, um, that's a toss up for me. I love the original, especially the Robusto. Yeah, And, uh, I mean, we sold that out fairly quick, and uh, that'll be making a return at the end of this fall. Good, good, good. And, uh, yeah, so we that's one of the things that, you know, that I did here is Brian had started that brand years ago with Abe Flores and, uh, you know, then had some made uh, by Rocky Patel, and it was just dormant. I mean, we were sitting on a large inventory of stuff in 2007, 2008 still. Because originally, when it was made, they actually did the RTDA when ITCPR, excuse me, PCA, formerly yeah. ITCPR, formerly RTDA. <laughs> but, you know, they went out to the trade show in 2008, and the cigar was actually, the original run was actually in like 30, 35 shops at the time. Oh, wow, okay. Had a couple of reviews online from bloggers back then. and uh, But it was sitting dormant. I'm like, eh, you know, mm. this is something we could actually capitalize on. And uh, so... You know, approached uh, James at uh, Ovea Negra, James Brown from Black Label, and was more than happy to jump on board. We worked on it, and, you know, first one was really successful. So we've got a total of five blends and 20 different controls we can work with. Hmm. And uh, so this time we're, you know, we're coming back with the 5x48 Robusto, and we've got a 6x52 Toro this time. And we're also coming out with a Lancero, uh, which will be the Fort de Caesar Novin after our buddy Dave, who loves Lanceros. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, so, yeah, the cigar is going to be called the Fort de Caesar Novin. Yeah. That's Fort awesome. Dave. <laughs> Dave is the Lancero king. When I was with him in Nashville uh, last summer, we, we definitely jammed on a few of our favorite Lanceros there. He, he's got the biggest Lancero yeah. collection I've ever heard of. Right. Then we have a 15th anniversary. Uh, wasn't ready for the uh, for the anniversary weekend, but for the anniversary year, we have a 15th anniversary cigar coming out of La Vega Negra. That'll be oh, a Fort cool. de Caesar six by fifty two Barber Pole. Oh, sweet. That'll be the second. That'll be the second Fort de Caesar blend with the Barber Pole of the two wrappers from the the first two uh, blends that we put out. That's awesome. So that'll oh. be the you know the the Brazilian Matafina and the uh, Pennsylvania Broadleaf Maduro. Oh, put me down for a box now. That's hot. Yeah. Uh, it's been a fun ride. It's been great meeting all these people and making a lot of friends. Uh, hopefully it continues. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I think you've done a marvelous job in building those relationships that I, I think the relationships will continue. You know, we were talking a moment ago about 
one of the things that you would do if you had to start over and didn't have the presence you do now, being able to stay current with what's coming out, try to predict some of these brand, new brands on the market uh, who got some sticking power. Is there a brand or two or a cigar out right now that may not be as well known that you're saying, I've really enjoyed this. This is one that I think will have that people need to be checking out. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, uh, there's more, put it this way, in the 30 years I've been smoking cigars, there are more good and great cigars on the market now than any time since I, probably any time since dawn of cigars possibly, but, hmm. you know, since at least in, since 1989, since I've been enjoying cigars, that's I mean, awesome. it is, there is just so much stuff out there that's good or really good or great. Yeah. You know, I mean, I love the Sebastian stuff, the Cavalier. Uh, some of the smaller brands are really good. You've got like HBC. You've got Mike Bellady at MLB. I mean, there's just a ton. I'd hate not to, uh, I'd hate to forget something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Like, I understand it's hard to pick one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, there really is a lot. I mean, there really is. The guys that, uh, you know, at, uh, Lozona's been putting out some great stuff for protocol. You know, Hector's really done a good job with that. Hector and I are in Juan and Bill. Uh, not that they're new, but they're growing. Yeah. You know, that, that brand's growing. Uh, and they're known mostly, I would think, in this area and then on the East Coast. Uh, but, you know, there really is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. There really is. I mean, you've got, and then you've got these. You know, ones that you're a little hesitant of at first because you see these marketing pushes from cigar. I mean, you've seen them over the years in the groups, you know, where you'll see somebody, you know, people, oh, smoking this brand that'll pop up and for three months everybody's smoking it. And then three months later, you never see it again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and because uh, that, then you're like, oh, yeah, well, this guy was sending me cigars to smoke and uh, post them. <laughs> But uh, and not that they were bad cigars, you know, they're good cigars, they're solid, but there's so many good things out there. Sure. I mean, uh, there's, you know, you've got now, you've got like the huge marketing campaign behind and uh, everywhere. It was great at the trade show seeing all the things from Blackbird cigars. Yeah. I mean, they had a huge thing. <laughs> we walked into the trade show when they were walking in. There's like these 10 guys all dressed exactly alike. <laughs> and, oh, wow. Uh, and it's funny because for, you know, I'd gotten calls from the people with the behind that for years with the, you know, trying to carry the big poppy and different things like that, that they make at the factory. Oh, sure. And they were like, yeah, I like it, but not great. But then, you know, these are good cigars. Yeah. One of the guys who's active in a lot of the Facebook groups too, that has Noel Rojas making a cigar now, Lee Marsh. Yeah. With the Crook in the Crown or a you know, Stolen Throne. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've yeah, really Stolen enjoyed that. Stolen Throne Solid cigar. Uh, what did I say? Crook in the Crown. I'm, I've got my brains fried here. No, you're right. Crook, crook, crook like in the Crown is a cigar name. Like, yeah. Yeah, put like 60 hours in already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, I mean there's some really sleep? good stuff out there. You know? I, I mean, you know, stuff that, you know, two of the brands that went national last year that were sold directly to consumer until then is you got, you've got JSK, you've got Sinistro, ones that they, they've both done well in the shop yeah yeah and awesome. online you know they and all these brands they've got their own little you know facebook communities and stuff in their groups and things and i think that's the huge thing is when brand owner or a brand you know guy who owns the factory who owns the brand is interactive with customers i mean if it takes me time you know 30 40 hours a week to deal on social media i cannot imagine what these guys that are active, like the Skip Martins, the Steve Sockas, all these guys, how long it takes these guys. Sure. I don't know how they yeah. ever get a chance to make cigars. Oh, yeah. Until we don't. Yeah, I mean, it's I, been impressive Skip how well they connected. Skip, you know, they're two guys I admire greatly. I, you know, him, James Brown, Steve. You know, these guys are just, you know, Skip, Steve, and James, just really great guys. You know, Skip is one of the most, you know, it's funny, a lot of, he's so present on social media, I think sometimes people take him for granted because he's always there, but he really is one of the nicest, most generous guys you'll ever meet in your life. I don't know, you know, he may come across different sometimes on Facebook, but, you know, I've been to his house multiple times, eight, 
that, you know, in Espalier and through the factory with them and multiple times. Just And James is the same way. James Brown is the same way. It, you know, there's nothing that they wouldn't do for you, would, hmm. wouldn't offer you. I mean, it's been, I mean, I've spent multiple, like I said, days at skips and dinners and stuff. And, you know, and James, we were just been to the factory multiple times, the house multiple times. Just spent, you know, spent a day or two down the, in San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua at his beach house. You know, it's, that's another thing that other than the consumers becoming friends with and developing relationships is the manufacturers and the brand owners. Yep. Yeah. The, the fact that these guys are so busy and, you know, trying to build their business, trying to make sure their factories are running properly, trying to make sure the cigars are consistent, trying to, you know, trying to buy the best tobacco they can get their hands on to put out the best cigars. The fact that these guys take the time to spend time and deal with a little peon like me, you know, <laughs> I greatly, I mean, I really, I mean that I greatly appreciate it. It's greatly appreciated. These you know, these guys have been absolutely wonderful. You know, the Eric Espinosas and things. These guys are just really good guys. Yeah, it's true. I've had a jo- joy getting to know some of these manufacturers and hearing their passion for what they're creating, the science that goes into how they blend. It's, it's a true art form as well in what they create. And then being able to, like you say, build that relationship with them to take something yeah. on the cigar to then really build that community uh, it, behind the brand, behind the product, behind the experience. And then other shop owners or shop managers, you know, I've become really good friends with a lot of shop owners and you know, I really appreciate, you know, the relationship. It, it's just really cool that, you know, that's why, again, what I love about cigars the most is how it brings people together. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else matters during that time, during that hour, hour and a half or whatever time these guys are together with people, nothing else matters in the world. That's awesome. And I love that. that our, our little escape from reality. Yep. Yep. Well, man, I, I love what you've created uh, in in the experience and relationship through BNB. That the presence you have online, I think it's been a uh, something that is extremely admirable, and I think a lot of retailers can learn from and grow from. Hopefully, from our conversation here today, they can pull out some ideas of what they can be applying to their business, uh, building the trust with their with the owner when they're not the owner of the shop, like you've been able to build with Brian. And yeah, I mean, if it wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't for Brian and the type of guy he is, uh, none of this would be possible. You know, he, again, he's one of the most generous, nicest guys I've ever met. You know, we, we butt heads at times. I'm sure I drive. (laughs) I'm sure there are times he's banging his head against a concrete wall because I drive him bad shit crazy because I have so many (laughs) ideas, so many things I want to do. And, uh, you know, I think he's Warren Buffett or Bill Gates with all the money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That, that's you, know, a good, like, good. You, you do realize your idea is like a $100,000 idea, right? But it's like, <laughs> yeah, but just think of the potential return, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, hey, you got to have those dreamers. You got to have that opportunity. And I think, as, as we said earlier, you've definitely delivered on some of those ideas for him to take B&B to some new levels. Yeah, and we're we're in a we're in a really competitive area here. I mean, the Mid Atlantic area and you know the Philadelphia area too is really competitive. There's some great shops around here. There are some really fantastic cigar shops and cigar owners, and you know the shop owners that just really good people. Yeah, you know, so yeah. it's really tough and a competitive. I mean, I know there's some. I talk to you know guys that run shops in areas that you know it's rural. There's not a lot of competition. There's not a lot of shops around and. You know, it's a really competitive market here. It, it really is. And it's, I always try to, every day I wake up, it's like, you know, when I'm getting in the car ready to go to work, I'm like, you know, what can I do today to try to stay, stay afloat, stay at the, mm. you know, stay where we can continue, you know, continue to be relevant. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love it. I think you've you've definitely been able to make that happen as as a consumer as a customer of BNB. Uh, it's been a, a true privilege shopping from you, and I think that's been the highlight of I pulled up from our conversation of the importance of that relationship and community you've developed. So, man, 
thank you so much for what you've shared with us today. I'm excited to see what else comes out of B&B. I know you guys got a great event coming up soon with Caldwell. For those who are in the Philadelphia area and listening, how can uh, how can they stay connected with you, learn about this upcoming event? And for those who aren't in Philadelphia, how can people find out what B&B has to offer and shop online with you? Yeah, I mean, the website's bnbcigars.com. Uh, Facebook page is BNB Cigars. Everything's listed there, contact numbers, phone numbers. People are more than welcome to reach out to me through Facebook or other social media. But, yeah, that's uh, on Friday the 26th. From, uh, Robert will be in here from, like, 536 till whenever. We officially supposedly close at 10, but during events, that never happens. <laughs> I mean, during the... Black, during the Black Label event, uh, I think the last person left at four in the morning. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roma, Roma, Roma event, we officially closed at six. I think I got out of here at 11 <laughs> on Monday. That was a good time. But, uh, yes. Yeah, we had a great time. I said we had people come from all, you know, somebody drives 300 miles to get here. I'm not going to say, geez, time to leave. Time to go you home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Whenever they're ready, we're, you know, I'm, I'm here until they're ready. I love it. I love it. Well, Vince, thank you so much for your time today. It's a true privilege having you on the show and having a friendship and relationship with you. You are my local B&M. I'm grateful for you. I appreciate it, Kyle. Love you to death and uh, appreciate all the, you know, the good words and everything. And uh, I'm sure you'll keep in touch. <laughs> absolutely absolutely all right you guys thank you for tuning in we will be back with a new episode and carrying on our cigar series as we move on next week have a great day hey i want to thank you very much for joining us for this episode of marketing from the roosevelt room i know you have a lot of options on what podcasts you can listen to so thank you sincerely for taking the time to join us for this one if you have enjoyed this conversation would love to keep it going in our facebook group marketing from the roosevelt room with kyle willis in that we have live video q a and create more of a dialogue would love to keep the conversation going so please join us on facebook otherwise look forward to catching you on our next episode. Have a great day.